As sporting images go we will wait a while to beat the side of the Ukraine team, kitted out in their vivid yellow and blue, lost in the embrace of their supporters away in one small corner of Hampton Park following the scoring of their second goal on this remarkable It was hard to believe these players were here in Scotland at all. That they were about to win this game after playing no football together since December was another thing entirely. But when the emotion and wider context of this game was stripped away, one simple football fact Ukraine will face Wales and Cardiff on Sunday with a shot at becoming the most popular World Cup finalists of all time because they were the better team by an extraordinary This was a game lent late drama as the visiting team understandably tired and Scotland found impetus through a goal from Callum But for the majority of this game, Ukraine were superior to Scotland by a margin nobody could really They controlled the possession and territory to such a degree that Steve Clark's team didn't threaten their goal until an hour had been played By that time Ukraine were two goals up. Scotland were for the large part, absolutely. If this was a big night for Ukraine then it was for Scots too and they froze. When the Ukraine substitute Artem Dovbik broke away to score simply with the very last kick of the night, he restored a winning margin that reflected the difference between the teams at the end of a game that reminded us just what sporting combat. For the Ukrainian players, this was an occasion that enabled them to forget, just for a while, the realities of their nation's changed circumstances. After weeks locked away in their training camp in Slovenia, safe from war but physically and emotionally detached from the world to which they were previously accustomed, they played with freedom. Scotland, on the other hand, seemed diminished. The tag of favourites clearly did not suit them and it will be a while before players like the normally infallible John McGinn can forget the horror of such failure. McGinn was not the worst here but he did somehow miss an open goal from six yards. Hampton had extended due friendship to the several thousand Ukraine supporters inside this great amphitheatre at the start of the game. There were Ukrainian flags carried by some home fans. But when the football started, the Scots were on the back foot and, for the large part, it was where Clark's team played aimlessly direct football while Ukraine maneuvered themselves into good positions by way of intelligent passing and numeric. Craig Gordon, the 39-year-old Scotland goalkeeper, was soon busy, touching a first-time half volley from Viktor Tsigankov over the bar after the Ukraine player had run freely on to Oleksandr Karavayev cross from the Hearts goalkeeper would have expected to make that one. The ball was struck well but was rising and required just a faint touch. In the 17th minute, though, Gordon produced something special to deny West Ham's Andrei Yarmolenko from point played onside by a dozing defender and blew as the ball arrived, Yarmolenko turned and shot low to Gordon's right but the goalkeeper got a hand to the ball to stall its momentum and was then able to stand, turn and drop on it as a the pattern of the game was set already and it shone bright yellow dot in the 32nd minute the first goal or a long ball from the center half position found Yarmolenko angling a run from the right and when he applied a stunning first touch to the dropping ball he was able to lift it over Gordon and into the goal Gordon had possibly dashed a little too far off his line but it was hard to be critical he had pretty much kept his team in the game up until that point. Scotland, but off at halftime simply had to improve but they could not and when another cross from Karvayev on the right found Roman Yaremchuk dropping off his marker at the far post, his climb above Scott McDominay and Aaron Hickey was high enough to facilitate a header directed down and back across Gordon and in Scotland looked lost and they were dot briefly home voices raised in anticipation when McGregor charged down a clearance from Ukraine goalkeeper jo but the ball bounced wide and when Bush can fumble the McTominay cross onto McGinn's head soon after he somehow directed the chance past the Ukraine did tire. They were always likely to. Bushkin was becoming increasingly erratic, and this combination offered Scott a poor punch and then a fumble allowed McGregor's bouncing shot to scrape over the line with 12 minutes left, and briefly a comeback was on the cards. Finally, Hampton found its spirit. But this was a game decided by quality. Manchester City's Oleksandr Zinchenko was magnificent in central midfield. The two goal scorers were the epitome of menacing elegance. Buoyed by this incredible night, Ukraine will travel to Wales for Sunday's final eliminator with more than just hope carrying them forwards to relive all the action on the night at Hampton Park with our live runner from Sports Mills.